On-orbit ship-to-ship refueling is one of the most important and difficult technical challenges SpaceX is yet to solve for Starship. Orbital refueling is necessary to send any Starship to Mars or the Moon, or even just to give it a boost so it can deploy satellites into higher energy orbits. Well, actually that last part might not be totally true. Because whether you like it or not, everything in this world comes down to money. And it would be dumb to do something that costs more money when you have a cheaper option. And, by the looks of it, orbital refilling might not be the optimal or cheapest way to accomplish all of Starship's objectives. So let's explore stage efficiency and launch cost to determine when orbital refilling is a good idea and when it isn't. Before we get started, I want to very quickly comment on why I'm making this video in the first place. I recently released a video talking about how poorly Starship performs when delivering payloads to high energy orbits, GTO specifically. In that video, I mentioned several changes SpaceX could and probably will implement to increase Starship's payload capacity to these orbits, chiefly stretching the ship and adding a kick stage. Now, when I read the comments on that video, I started to notice a theme. What about orbital refilling? You didn't talk about orbital refilling. They'll just use orbital refilling. Bah, 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 bah. There were many more that continued along these lines. So why didn't I talk about orbital refilling? Well, the answer is, for GTO at least, orbital refilling kind of sucks. Allow me to explain. This graph showcases the delta V capacity of a fully fueled starship, a little over 9200 meters a second. Now, what this graph implies is that a refilled Starship has a payload capacity of over 1500 tons. Obviously, that's not possible, so what we're going to do is add a little line here that makes a cutoff at the maximum payload Starship can actually get into orbit, roughly 130 tons for this Block 2 version. Taking an actual look now, we can see that a fully refilled Starship is actually an incredibly capable vehicle. With a full payload, the ship has a very respectable 6,650 meters a second at delta V. That is more than enough to send all of that payload to the Moon or Mars. So if we were looking at a GTO orbit for example, we wouldn't need anything close to a fully fueled ship. Let's go ahead and do the math and see what the minimum amount of fuel would be needed to send a Starship with a full payload out to geostationary transfer orbit. Alright, so it looks like that's a little under half of the total performance of the vehicle. Now, because you need less and less delta V for each unit of propellant you add, this would actually translate into us needing a lot less than half of its total capacity. By my estimation, we'd need to fill the tanks up to about 30%, which translates to roughly 450 tons of propellant. Cool, that's step one done. Next, we need to figure out how many tanker launches that would be required to fill up our ship. Since Block 2 Starship has a payload capacity in the ballpark of 130 tons, we're going to assume each refilling launch will carry... drumroll please? 130 tons of propellant. If we do some super complicated math, we can see that 450 divided by 130 is equal to roughly 3.46, meaning we need a total of 4 launches to send 130 tons of payload to GTO. If we include the initial launch with the payload, that means we'll need a grand total of 5 launches. Now, I am aware that SpaceX plans on using propellant depots to refuel in orbit, but I'm going to mostly skip over them because it doesn't really matter if you launch a tanker to refill a depot or just a regular ship. A launch is a launch. Now, let's see what would happen if we were to use a kick stage instead. As we calculated in the previous video, a kick stage with a 3 ton dry mass burning an RL-10 engine could deliver 69 tons into GTO, about half of what we need. So if we were to say, launch a second one, then we could deliver all 130 tons into GTO in two launches instead of five if we were to use orbital refilling. I don't know about you, but two launches seems like it would be cheaper than five launches. But I do want to give orbital refilling a fair shot, so we should discuss some of the drawbacks of adding a kick stage to Starship, because it's not perfect. The biggest problem with using a hydrogen-powered kick stage is, well, the hydrogen. 
For those of you who are unaware, hydrogen is a famously difficult propellant to deal with. Because the molecule is so small, it tends to be very, well, leaky. Not only that, but SpaceX would have to significantly rework their propellant farm to accommodate the extra commodity. This would include adding tanks, adding lines to the vehicles, coordinating extra deliveries, among many other challenges. This is why I would bet that SpaceX will likely never invest in building a Hydrolox anything. <laughs> If we want to save our kickstage power dreams, we'll probably have to use a different propellant. I think the obvious choice would be methane. Not only because it's a much more tame commodity to work with, but SpaceX already has all of its infrastructure built around methalox. Methane is of course a less efficient fuel when compared to LH2, so let's see what kind of graph we'd get for a methane powered kickstage. Hey, that's, that's not bad. If you look at our GTO capacity, it's about 65 tons. Now we're going to need to drop 5 tons from that to account for the fuel the kickstage needs to dock back up with the ship, so that brings our total down to 60 tons versus 69 tons for a hydrolox stage, about a 13% loss. So even with a methalox stage, we could still deliver the 130 tons with only two launches. Well, technically we'd be about 10 tons short, but I think that's, I think it's fair to count it. If we really don't want to give the kickstage a break and say it would need three launches, that's, well, still two less than the tankering approach. Even if you assume a Starship launch will eventually only cost a few million dollars and the price difference between two or three launches and five launches rounds to basically zero, I think you should still consider the fact that to do on-orbit refilling, you need to deliver an additional 450 tons of payload to orbit, while for a kick stage, you'd only need 140 tons of extra payload for two launches or 210 tons for three. That's well over a 50% decrease in marginal payload. No matter how you look at it, a kickstage is just way more efficient for GTO payloads. For Moon and Mars missions on the other hand, where you would likely need to also use the ship as a lander, then orbital refilling is absolutely the way to go, because there really isn't any other option. And again, to be fair, because we are fair here at Paola Studios, but the kickstage approach does limit the maximum mass of a single payload in a way that tankering does not. My numbers suggest that a single launch with a kickstage could do no more than 60 tons of payload, so a mission that utilizes orbital refilling will obviously be able to take advantage of all of Starship's payload capacity, meaning if a customer has some ridiculous 100 plus ton satellite that they want sent to GTO, then using a kickstage is pretty much not an option unless you want to do some sort of orbital assembly type thing, which would be wildly complex and expensive. Likely much more expensive than just launching it all in one and letting it get all filled up in Leo. Now, before we wrap up, I do want to acknowledge the fact that any kick stage would take up some space in the payload bay, thereby limiting the available volume for other payloads. But I think, especially for Block 3, it won't be a big problem, because by the looks of things, that payload section is already comically big. I don't know if anyone could even dream up a GTO payload that could fill even half of that thing. Anyway, that's just about all I got for you guys today. So I'd like to end by saying thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please rate or comment to this video. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.